Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. If you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for stopping by. What I want to talk about are some of the things I experienced in early recovery. When I talk about early recovery, I'm thinking about, you know, the first day up to the first 12 months of recovery. These things I experienced, some things people told me not to do and I went ahead and did it anyways. Some things I just thought was the right way of thinking, but it turned out to be the wrong way of thinking, if that makes any sense. This video is about awareness. And if you're thinking like this, or you're experiencing these difficulties, I just want to let you know that you are not alone. And just take it one day at a time, and you too will get many years of sobriety and have a wonderful life. The first one I want to talk about is that I always thought in early recovery that recovery was going to be hard all the time. Yeah, you know, I just thought that. My early days of recovery, the first six or seven months, was really difficult. And the reason for that, basically, is we're clearing up the wreckage of the past. I had an ex-wife that was taking me to court. I had child support. I was unemployed. I had no money. I had court charges. I was I had assault charges up against me. I had debt collectors after me and I was trying to stay sober. I was a nervous wreck. I was an emotional person. I had a lot of problems in early sobriety. So I always thought, gee, this is really hard to get sober. And am I gonna stay like this? Is life just going to be shitty all the time? Like, this is way too hard. I thought if I just stopped drinking, life would get better. But you know, it got a hell of a lot worse before it got better. But I got a sponsor in early sobriety. He told me, Terry, you will get through this one day at a time. Don't quit before the miracle comes. And he had a number of years of sobriety. He had a family. His life seemed to be rolling along pretty good. And many other members that I knew at the time, life was good. It wasn't always good for them. In sobriety, in early sobriety, it can be difficult. It can be very hard, but it doesn't remain like that. It doesn't. Over time, your sobriety will get better. Me, I had a lot of charges, like I set up against me. I had a lot of issues. I had emotional issues. I had mental issues. It took me a little longer than maybe the average person, but I did get where I want to be. And, and, and where that is, is that today, I feel comfortable in my own skin. So if you're feeling that your sobriety is hard and you can't get any traction, don't get discouraged. Stay sober, take it one day at a time, and your life will get better. It really will. Go to meetings, reach out, do all those sort of things that they're telling you to do in 12-step programs, and hang on, because it will get better. So that was one thing that really used to get me down in recovery. Another thing is that 12-step programs are the fix-all for everything. The 12 steps have always kept me sober. The recovery programs have always kept me clean and sober. They really have. But when it came to getting a job or fixing my relationships with my family or with my children, I had to seek outside help. I have never drank in over 25 years and 12-step programs of recovery have helped me in that area. But I need to reach out and get some extra help from other professionals. I really did. So if the 12 step program is keeping you sober, but you're still having a lot of difficulties with emotions or with your children or with your partner or whatever it may be, or finding a job, go and seek outside help and that'll enhance your program. It really will. So thinking that the 12 step programs are a fix all for everything, well, I wish they were because it would be a lot easier. Another one that a lot of people probably get themselves into, and this is the one I was told about not to do, and that was getting involved in a relationship. Trying to find a partner, a love life. And I was told many times not to do that. And you know something? I don't know too many people who have not done it or at least try to get in a relationship the first 12 months of their sobriety. And that was me. And let me tell you something, relationships will bring out 
the, well, I shouldn't say the worst in you, but I'm sure in hell brought out the worst in me. I couldn't focus on my program. I couldn't get, you know, spiritual or, or I just couldn't get a handle on life when I was involved in a relationship. I don't blame the person I was with. And I didn't, you know, she didn't make me drink. But you know something? I made that choice to get involved in that relationship with this person. It destroyed my sobriety and my serenity. And I'm not saying don't do it. You know, I'm not telling you, to, you know, you have to make up your own mind and do what you want. But for myself, if I would have had to do my sobriety over again, I would have stayed so I would have stayed out of relationships until I didn't want to be in a relationship, if that makes any sense, or until I felt that I was happy in my own skin and things were going well for me. I rushed into that area of my life and it was very, very difficult for me to maintain any sort of relationship with any sort of person of the opposite sex in early sobriety. So if you're thinking about that, and if you could stay out of those relationships, any relationship, that would be really beneficial to you. But you have to make your own mind up on that one. Another one is, is you have to do things alone. This was a big one for me. Thinking that, okay, I got, I'm still, I, I'm not drinking now. I'm going to go to 12 step programs, but I'm not going to reach out for help. I'm not going to ask anybody for help because I think I got things pretty well under control. I got the drinking problem solved. I'm not drinking anymore. I'm working, I have a relationship, things seem to be okay, I have a car. But thinking that I have to, I'm doing it by myself or I'm alone doing it. And I don't know if you think like that, but I was thinking like that. Like I was going to meetings, I was talking to my sponsor a little bit, I was talking to people about my recovery, but I was always doing it by myself. I was never reaching out for help and asking somebody for guidance or getting support from other people. I became a very, you know, an individual in, in recovery. And what happened to me is I just slowly got sicker in, in, in my own thoughts. My right thinking was my wrong thinking. It took a long time for me to reach out in recovery. It took about 24 months for me to start reaching out and asking for help in a 12-step program. And that's after two relapses, another jail, another assault charge, pretty well going bankrupt and on the street. Nine months sobriety the first time and 14 months the second time. I finally was broken enough or beaten down enough that I started to reach out for help and ask somebody to guide me and give me some advice. How the hell do I stay sober? I feel so alone. But I thought that if I just threw my will at things, my life would get better. That's what I honestly believed. And in, the cer in a certain way, it does work. But in the long term, it didn't work. I needed some support, either from 12-step people, therapy, whatever it was. But I had to get off the Terry Island and start asking people for support. I am not a loner. I cannot do the program by myself. The more support I get, the more help I get, the easier my recovery life became. Really. Asking for help is not a weakness. It's a strength. And I thought that I had to just do things on my own that prove to myself or be responsible for my own well-being in recovery. Another one is, is that in early recovery, I hung around with my old buddies. I remember going to 12 step meetings or maybe not even going to a meeting after work and my buddies would be having a party. Here's me drinking pop. They're smoking dope, doing coke, drinking beers and all that kind of stuff. And I'm at the, dinner, I'm at the uh, kitchen table with them joking and playing around and they're all getting high and smoking dope and cigarettes Well, I smoked at the time and thinking that that was okay to do. Hanging around with my old buddies, thinking that I was one of the old gang, one of the old party guys. And like I said in the other part here a couple minutes back, 
is that I relapsed and that played a part. The old saying is, if you hang around a barber shop long enough, eventually you will get a haircut. And yeah, I did get a haircut. I, wanted, I went on two terrible relapses. And I'm not saying that they made me relapse or seeing them do coke made me relapse. I'm not saying that, but I sure it, I'm sure it didn't help. I think it added to the situation. I was emotionally, mentally, spiritually vulnerable at those times. And going to those parties and hanging around with my old buddies was not good for me. It really wasn't good for me at all. And the last one, I could go on and on. We could add to this list. This list can go on for forever about things that had a negative effect on our sobriety and my sobriety. But the last one was that I want to point out is that quitting drinking, quitting drinking that I thought was enough. If I just quit drinking, it was enough. And that was one of my biggest, biggest hurdles in sobriety. That was one of my biggest depriments that eroded my sobriety. Thinking that all I had to do was put a plug on the jug and life would get better. And I believe that. I really did. And a lot of this video that I'm talking about is kind of related to this last one. I believed that if I quit drinking, just stop the booze, putting it in my body, that life would get better. I would get better. Things would get better. I'd get a better job. Everything would change. My relationships with my family, with my girlfriend, with my kids would get better. Thinking that all we have to do is quit drinking is really hazardous to our sobriety. It really, really is. We need to change. We need to get involved in recovery. We need to find support and we need to change our lives completely. We need to do a 180 in our life and get it together. Quitting drinking is a big deal. It's, you know, step one in all our recovery. We have to quit drinking before we're able to get better. But thinking that drinking is the only thing we have to do in recovery is ridiculous. And I thought that. I truly thought that and I truly believed it. And again, I contribute that to my relapses. And when I relapsed in those olden days, I had a lot of anger, a lot of self-hate. I was jealous. Ah, it was a terrible, terrible time. Change we must. If you're willing to do the work in your program, your life will turn around immensely. You will have a life that you cannot imagine. You will feel good in your own skin. People will respect you. You will have self-respect. Things will come about that you will not believe. And you know something? I have a life right today that I can't believe that I have. It's taken me a lot of work, a lot of time, and you know I wouldn't have changed it for anything. Sobriety for me has been terrific. These things in this video that I'm talking about are just general potholes or negative experiences that I encountered in early sobriety. But if you're encountering anything in your sobriety that is sort of dragging you down or, or it's like you hit a wall, don't give up. You will learn how to live sober one day at a time. You will learn that. You will learn how to walk and talk the program. You will learn how to find confidence or you'll learn how to soothe yourself and love yourself when you feel the world has beaten you down. But you need to stay sober. You need to get out there and pick up yourself and move forward. It is not easy for sobriety to get to have sobriety. It's not easy to have recovery or our rooms will be full of people with recovery, but it's not. We've only scratched the surface and you know, 12 step programs are like 70, 80 years old and we've still just scratched the surface. The rooms would be full 
It's not easy, but it's not impossible. A lot of people before us have many years of sobriety and you can have sobriety too. So that's it folks, that's it for this video. I hope you like this video. If you do, please leave a comment below. If you don't, please leave a comment below. But can you all do me one favor? Can you subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. Okay, thank you very much for stopping by. And as usual, stay safe, look after yourself, take it one day at a time, stay away from the booze, and if it gets tough, you get tougher in your life. Stand up for yourself and you'll see, your life will change, it really will. God bless you, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.